Hey everybody, welcome back to Ryan Makes Sense. I'm in a pickle. Do I go down the rabbit hole of looking at household goods and personal products, or do we review a scanner that we've made uh, here? You guys can see that, right? Um, we have the Mist 200% scan, Apple when it was $16 scan, the Elf 2334% scan, which is what we just did yesterday. It's a good video, by the way. Uh, Tesla, when it before it had its one thousand plus percent gain, and Phase when it had its one percent, one thousand percent gain. Income value growth scanners, uh, casting a wide net for gems, looking for digital gold mine such as like apps when ticker symbol APPS was a dollar, and it went to a hundred dollars. Solid movers like Nvidia, potential twenty x stocks like AMD. Um, so. Do we want to go down the rabbit hole of household personal goods or look at a scanner? I'm going to flip this coin. Uh, one will be scanner, two will be rabbit hole or whatever that is. Okay. Rabbit hole. All right. So the rabbit hole is going to be, if you watch my last video, Elf went from $8 to hundred and something, 169. Um, and it's a household and personal products stock. I did some scans to replicate it, which is what this scan is here. It gave us six stocks and honestly, INMD was very, very, very attractive. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reset everything and we're just gonna go down a rabbit hole together. We're gonna look at household and product goods. So this is exactly what I'm gonna do. Uh, industry and we're gonna go to household and personal products all right there's 26 products elf is one of them that is exactly what we want to see uh, but to take it down a little bit let's look for stocks that let's look through these that are under um, how about let's see Price $47, Brush Oral Care is five cents. Uh, Church and Dwight is 104, 90, 153, 11. Okay, let's, let's look at stocks that are under $23. How about that? That sounds fine. But we're also missing potential stocks that uh, are super good. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna pull some of the metrics from this back when it was 2020, when it was twenty-two dollars, and we're gonna replicate here. So we obviously want the quick ratio to be one over one, and we want the uh, where is it EPS for next year to be positive. All right, we're down to thirteen stocks. EPS next year positive. Down to 10 stocks, all right. Um, shares float, we're gonna do under 100 million. Float under 100 million. Nine stocks, shares outstanding, we're gonna do under 100 million. And again, these are from ELF when it was $22, so. Okay, uh, we went from nine stocks down to eight. Um, what else can we just, ah, uh, market caps, we'll keep it how it is. Don't wanna eliminate too much. Gross margins, very high. We'll do over 30%. Gross margin over 30%. Eight, okay. Uh, profitable, We ah, uh, no. Okay, so we have, let's look, let's just look at these uh, eight stocks. These are all household and product goods, so I do want to read exactly what type of goods they are. China, um, respectfully going to pass on Chinese companies just because there's a lot of power with the sole dictator over there. So we're just we're not going to we're not going to go there. 
So EPC is going to be our first one that we're going to look at. Um, consumer defensive, household product, household and personal products. I think of like toiletries. So it was 105, now it's down to 38. That's a good 60% discount. This is good. You could see it plateaued and my head's right in the middle of everything. Apologies. How rude. Okay. Uh, so you guys can see this is great. Shares of standing, this is go going down just naturally being purchased organically. EPS, uh, a little bit of mixed match, but it's positive. That's the that's the best thing. Uh, they do offer a dividend. They do $2 billion in sales. That's amazing. But they do offer a dividend. I would prefer them putting that money in the back into the business. Uh, okay. We're going to run my calculation here because I do think this is a compelling stock. We can see the momentum actually looks like it's curling up here. Relative momentum curling up matches. Money flow is kind of flat. It's at 41. Strength is going up. I think I like this one. And then this looks like a positive doji here on the month of March or in April now. Crazy. Okay. I do like this one from several perspectives. I like that the sales are naturally going up. Shares are being organically purchased, going down. There's no dilution. EPS, positive. It's a little bit mixed and match, but it's positive. The only thing I don't like is, okay, they offer a very low dividend. I would like them to put that back into the company, but let's do, they have 1,930,000,000 in market cap. Uh, they have 105,800,000 in income. That's insane. Plus 2,227,000,000. Billion, 2,227,000,000. Million, billion, 2 billion, million, yep. Okay. Let's look at their cash to the debts. All right, total cash is 214 mil. That's great. Plus 214 million, 200,000. Yep. Total assets, 3.7 billion. Total liabilities, 2.2 billion. Not bad. Uh, total debt is 1 billion. So minus 1 billion, 452 million, 300,000. All right. Okay, uh, now we're going to take this and divide it by. 49,350,000, yes. $62 stock trading at 38. That is almost 100% appreciation there. Um, and if I just peel back the curtain, interesting, interesting. It kind of looks like uh, going in reverse. So you see the ramp up, the sell off, ramp up, ramp down ramp up ramp down this reminds me of the psychology of the stock market where you have your high bottoms lower high bottoms lower high bottoms lower high question mark so uh let's just draw some lines we're drawing the line in the sand So um, based on the pattern here, uh, I mean, the stock is valued at a good price. The target price is $44 by analysts. The highest is 55. My calculation says 62. Uh, Cancor Genuity has 48, so not too bad. Uh, and then if we're looking at institutions, crap, okay. Uh, if we're looking at institutions, Fintel, and we wanna see EPC, that's going to kind of be the big, um, okay. So new data shows 108% ownership. Old data shows 97%. So about a 11% change in ownership to the positive side. I'm going to guess Vanguard and BlackRock are the top holders. Vanguard. Yes. Actually Vanguard shedded some BlackRock shedded a little bit, but I mean, historically speaking, this is at a good price. I mean a good, sorry, not price, a good, uh, ownership level um do we have time to wait and see yes um historically speaking these are not bad prices if the stock does fall 
seeing it test this line right here, which is a 22 year support as of today, that would be big in my opinion. Um, let's draw some more lines. Okay. So also clearly we can see the stock broke through the resistance and it fell through almost immediately right here. And now the stock has broken up and we can see positive buying down here, but we're not seeing an explosive move. Strength is going up. So the strength is building. The momentum does look like it's ready to flip. Um, in terms of price going much lower, like if it goes down to the 22 year support, the stock could go from 38 to 25. That's a $13 difference in stock price. You just really have to ask yourself, what's your risk reward? Or you're not your risk word, your risk tolerance. Um, if I had a hundred or if I had a thousand, a hundred dollars, ten thousand, whatever, I think buying one, two, three, four, five over the next five months, put in a tenth of that. So if you have a hundred bucks, do ten bucks a month, dollar cost average in, you know, over the next five months to get the best price here. If it goes down, you have another five months to go on the way down. And we would want to see it test this support line here that I'm highlighting and possibly the support line. So uh, I spent a lot of time on this one stock. At the moment, I'm okay. I will, I don't really want to set an alert. This is, uh, this is tough. I need some more time to fiddle with it. So if the stock does come back up and potentially, potentially test new highs, we could possibly see it go from 38 to 25 to 140 eventually. Um, but I mean, I, it could be in the, it could be in the turn right now. So just very, very interesting. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do some more support lines here for myself. The drop dead lowest price ever was around 11. Good support and resistance right here, right here. All right, and more support and resistance. Definitely right there. So a lot of supports, if it does fall below 25, a lot of good support, but it's it'll take you down. But it depends on your, again, your risk tolerance and your timeline. So um, not a bad one. And I mean, the momentum is curling up here too. So yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I'll just keep some on the back burner. I like it. Uh, I, I'll put an alert under 25 how about that epc under 25. all right okay all righty european wax center Oh, you know what? I reviewed this one a while ago and I thought this one was extremely attractive and I liked it, but I'm not a wax person, so I don't have much. I mean, I'm not an elf makeup person either, but it looks like they've gotten better. These sales are beautiful. They're diluting. That's tough to see. 2019, there's 31 million shares. 2023, there's 51 million. Uh, earnings per share is now positive. Um, oh, their debt, that is huge. That is huge debt. Um, let's just see what their debt is really. $375 million in debt. Total assets, 735. Total liability, 619. That is way too close for comfort for me. Their gross margins are very high. They're profitable, yeah. but they're barely paying off their debt in this interest rate environment. Oh man, like $12, is this worth $12 or less? 
It's just so hard to justify. And you can see the relative momentum is still very low. It's undecided. Money flow curled down, hard notch down. RSI is also going down. I think we can wait on European wax centers. However, I would be remiss if I missed the dip of all time. So I think we could end up in a cup and handle situation where, yeah, this, this is going to go lower in my opinion. Okay. I want to get this. This is like a good cup and handle scenario where I think it'll go lower again. What are institutions doing though? Because that's going to be important. I think this under ten dollars would be awesome. Let's see. Uh, the old data shows institutions and hedge funds own seventy six percent. Interesting. New data shows one hundred and thirty three percent. What? Vanguard, BlackRock, hello. Just BlackRock. Bamco owns 3 million shares. Alliance Bernstein, 2.1 million. What? What in the explosive? We, yeah, Vanguard. So Vanguard owns 1.8 million shares right now. Ooh, they they sold thirteen percent, so they may they may have owned a lot at one point, but they have sold off quite a bit. And when did they sell off? Excuse me. Um. March eleventh, about over a month, less than a month ago crazy crazy so i mean newer data this institutions continue to buy this but the stock price looks like it's going lower i think it has to and i think a long-term curl for a cup and handle where it comes up it tests 20 does a handle comes back to 11 does 30 okay renaissance technologies if they're in here they're always early they are they are they're very early they're way too early they bought in they have 231,800 shares Dude, I need to this is is this value this should probably be 827,000 I just need to confirm really quick. Oh. Okay, so the shares, they own that many shares, and then the reported value is going to be on the third. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There we go. So let's do that again. It's going to be 231,000. 800 shares divided by 3,000. I don't think that's right. Something's off here. 30,000? No. The stock never got down to $7. Ye Unless they purchased at $30. No. So I'm not sure where Renaissance got this. Uh, it says actually right before Valentine's Day. Ouch. So that would have been... Somewhere in here, so around $14 a share. Um, yeah, I mean, this one's tough. This one's tough. This one's definitely tough. A lot of red candles, a lot of resistance. I'm going to have to add an alert for this one. I might already have an alert. I don't. And I want this to be under $10. Oops, save. Okay. All right, I feel good with that. Uh, let's look at Grove. A penny stock. Well, a dollar. 
The stock, oh my gosh, looked like it was probably a SPAC. It went from $60, now down to $1. Not profitable, but the EPS going the right way. Sales going down. Dilution up the yin yang. Are they becoming closer to profitable? Let's find out. Yes, they are. They were 100, ne 100. negative 135, negative 87, negative 44. They're going the right direction. They're going the right direction. Um, they're going the right direction. They have 92 million in cash. Assets, 150 million. Total liabilities, 132 million. Dangerously close. Dangerously close for my comfort level. Um, this is good. Insider buying. Not too much, though. Yeah. Um... Could this one be a really good, I mean, look at this money flow. That's really good money flow. They're not profitable, but they're getting closer to profitability. EPS growth is nice. Uh, they're paying off their debt. You can see they're paying off their debt. Quick ratio is good. So no concern of them going out of business. Uh, let's, What's big money doing? And what what type of business? Growth collection. Uh, innovating sustainability oriented consumer products. Sounds like the honest company should purchase this company. Institutions on 27%. New data, old data shows 14%. So about 13% uh, difference. Okay, big sell-off. Do we have the Vanguards and the Black Rocks? No. With Morgan Stanley, though. Uh, Grove, they're not profitable, but they're going to get there. But I don't... Oh, man, this is tough. Like... This is tough. This is tough. This is tough. Sales are going down. Uh, I'm going to pass on it. I'll let you guys do some homework on this, but let's just do some high numbers. So 259 million in sales, but they're losing 44 million. So that is about 215 million positive there. Cash, they have about 90 million. So we're gonna call that 305 million minus 86. So about 215 million. 215 divided by 15, I mean, it's gonna give us a high number, which is gonna be like a $10 stock. Yeah, so if we do 215 divided by 15.96, $13, but if we also do the 215 divided by the outstanding of 332.18, $6 stock, and they keep diluting, so the value is going to get crushed because they're going to increase the supply. We're going to pass on Grove, but I do think if you like speculation, Grove is a good one for you to speculate. Uh, the Honest Company had a great quarter. Um, they're prof. No, they're not profitable. They might have been profitable this quarter. I'll have to check. This is great. Shares outstanding, not great. However, it's barely increased over the past four or five years. EPS still negative. Um, yeah, I mean... I'm gonna pass on this only because it's gone up like 300% in less than a year. So, yeah, you you it, you know. Ooh, what is this? This thing's hot. This thing's gone up over 100% in about a year and some change. They're prof. They're very profitable. Beautiful. This is going down organically. Sales are kind of going down too. That's not a good thing. Uh, what do they have? What do they sell? Manufacturing supply of consumer products and home essentials. The firm operates through the following statements. Home and personal care. Global pet care. Interesting. Home and garden. Very cool. Very interesting. Wow. The CEO is putting their money where their mouth is. That's a lot of shares to buy. Wow. Total. 
There we go. Total cash, 1.3 billion. Great. Total assets, 4.8 billion. Total liabilities, 2.5. Almost a two to one. All right, wow. Okay. Uh, we do like this company, but I don't like how we've already missed the boat. Let's see. Wow. Okay, this company's been around for a while. If you bought into this stock back in 1998, you're probably still holding the same position. If you bought the stock back in 86, you're down. So this is tough. Um, I am solely going to have to pass only because I don't think this presents a 2x opportunity at the moment. Um, let's see what institutions are doing. Uh, the old data shows that institutions on 104%. Uh, newer data, I'm going to guess saying a little bit more. 117%, so a 13% increase. However, look at this downward momentum here. Another another reason why I'm going to pass on this one. But Spectrum Brands, they offer a 1.9% dividend. Not my cup of tea. Okay, so we just left off on SPB. Oh, no. Okay, so I don't think we looked at IPAR. We did not look at NUS. So let's let's look at those ones. All right, enter perfumes. Let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, this is a big freaking bull flag. So here's our flag pull. Think of it as like a straight tilted line. That's our flag pull. Then our flag here. We're definitely going to dive into this one. Ooh, money flow is going down. Momentum looks like it's confused. Relative momentum shows it's hot. RSI kind of strong. Oh my gosh. You cannot argue with this. You cannot argue with this. You cannot argue with this. Wow. Okay, we're going to run our calculation here because I am very, very, very interested. They have four billion five hundred million in market cap. Good for them. They do one hundred fifty-two million six hundred fifty thousand income. That's huge. Plus one billion three hundred twenty million in sales. Again, that's huge. Okay. Um, very, very, very big numbers here. They do have one hundred plus one hundred eighty-two million seven hundred seventy thousand in cash. Total debt, give me billions, give me billion. Nope, only 152 million, 410,000, 410,000, okay. Total assets is eight, nope, 1.3 billion. Total liabilities, 482 billion. That's great. That's almost a three to one ratio where assets dwarf liabilities, almost. That's awesome. Liabilities went down. Also assets slightly went down, but I like that. Assets went down by 20 million. Liabilities went down by 17, 35 million. So that's that's a good, that's a fair trade-off. Um, Long-term debt is also going down over the past four quarters, five quarters. All right, cash is about the same. We're gonna take this and divide it by 18 million, 60,000. $332 stock price trading at 140. That's our aggressive estimate because we're looking at the shares float available. So that's good. That's really good. I'm going to say institutions are, are doing this. IPAR. Institutions as of today own 56%. I'm going to say it's closer to 70. That's my guess. Um, Gross margin, 63%, insane, prop, nice profit. Um, wow. 64.9%. 
All right. Ooh, that's a that's a big dip right there. Let's see what's going on. Vanguard and BlackRock. Uh, Vanguard decreased. BlackRock increased. Okay. Sounds like nobody knows what's going on. I'm not seeing any big position sellouts here. Okay, we have one new addition. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, eight, nine, ten, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, a lot more greens than reds for sure. A little bit, yeah, yeah, okay. Very, very interesting. What does IPAR do again exactly? If it's perfume, manufacturing, marketing, distributing fragrances. Okay, there's a high margin on perfumes. So that makes sense. Okay, they are not slowing down. They missed earnings. They missed earnings on the end of February. Okay, interesting. So, all right. If we could see some consolidation. Okay. Uh, Looking at this one, this one also provides a dividend, but I don't know if it's a regular dividend. Um, interesting. This is not a bad stock, and I think, I mean, it's gone up considerably already, but man, if the economy goes down and people are not going out spending money people are going to be less open to buying fragrances in my opinion just my opinion uh, i think we can wait on this one i will wait on this one um ipar let's put um, let's do prior i mean yeah i don't know yeah i don't know well, well we'll just keep ipar on the back burner but very very interesting new skin here we go i'm guessing this has to do with skin oof this thing's been from 140 138 down to 1380. Ooh, ooh, not good eps going down sales going down but people are buying the stock Let's see what insiders are doing. Andrew Lipman, just selling on a regular basis, could be planned. Uh, okay. All right, so we went down a rabbit hole. Um, I don't know if we found any amazing stocks, but looking at this one, Let's see what the big boys and girls are doing. Anyways. Institutions on 84% old data. New data shows 96% increase. Not a big increase. Vanguard decreased. Invesco increased. Wellington sold out. State Street decreased. BlackRock increased. So mix little mix there um i mean historically speaking you can't go wrong buying at 13 dollars because it's always it's always gone back so they had earnings february 14th let's see if they beat it Revenue down year over year. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think this has more potential of the downside. And I want to be looking at $8. You can see it has acted as support and resistance. 
going back to early 2000s or here almost came back here um yeah so 844 for nus let's just add that alert all right you guys we made it to the end if you made it this far consider subscribing thank you so much for watching have a great week